another day another video welcome back to the channel everybody today we are watching the big bang theory this is the second episode of the third season hope you guys have been enjoying it so far if you like to watch today's full episode this is available for offering a link in the description below just click on it put the password in and enjoy so in the first episode uh the guys returned from their expedition trip yes he was gone for three months and i thought they may have been um some sort of relationship distance from penny and obviously leonard in terms of um them growing apart from each other she may have moved on got a new boyfriend started seeing somebody you know we did see a side through quite a few in uh the first two seasons when they was will they won't they will they won't they but as soon as he knocked on the door bang she jumped on him she was making out they was loving it but uh howard had to drop the bomb on sheldon basically was saying that the results that he was getting from their trip uh wasn't all indeed fully accurate they had to uh, do something to basically get the uh, get Sheldon off the back. He was making their lives hell, and they was kind of tampering with his reports so that their life was a bit easier, and um, you know they could sail through it and get back all in one piece. Now, interestingly, you know this hit Sheldon hard. He thought he was going to get a Nobel Prize. He's already emailed the university saying that he's a confirmed string theory, and he had to retract his statement. He felt upset. He quit his job. He moved back to Texas with his parents. Um, you know it wasn't going well for him, but. The guys, they gone, they apologised, he accepted it and he returned home. And we had last episode confirmed at the very end that Leonard and Penny had finally slept together. And now it's a bit awkward, <laughs> you know, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do going forward. Are they going to stay friends with benefits? Are they just going to call it, hit it, quit? And you know what I mean? And we'll stay as friends. Or are they going to progress forward into a full-blown relationship? Who knows, mate? But it's interesting. Can't wait to find out. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you do enjoy it, please smash the like. Really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, let's jump into today's episode. <laughs> Wolverine was not born with bone claws. Howard, you know me to be a very smart man. Don't you think if I were wrong, I'd know it? You're arguing with a crazy person. <laughs> I'm not crazy. My mother had me tested. Oh, but since you and Benny finally hooked up, we thought you two would be having bouncy, naked, yum-yum nights. You have to have sex every night, you know. You don't have to, but it's highly recommended. <laughs> yeah, take advantage of that window of opportunity before it slams shut on your little dinky. Okay, who had Leonard gets a floppy disk? <laughs> <laughs> a clever, albeit obsolete, <laughs> euphemism for insufficient blood flow to the male sex organ. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that happened, all right? The sex was just fine. I'll tell you the truth, I think we were both a little, I don't know, disappointed, Awkward. let down, ashamed, horrified, repulsed. <laughs> all I know is it wasn't the way I dreamed it would be. Wolverine <laughs> Origin miniseries issue 2, page 22, retractable bone claws. Few people spent less time thinking about sex and more time concentrating on comic books we'd have far fewer of these embarrassing moments right talking about them there being uh being awkward you know i totally get that and mm, the first time probably isn't going to be the best for them considering that he's always wanted it and he would have hyped it up way bigger than he it actually would have been what it actually is is a momentous thing as a first step into being with somebody that you want to be with do you know what i mean like many people sit here and look at females so for example you know celebrity crushes like oh my god robert you know what i mean or whoever selena gomez or whatnot and say i really wish that i could do x y and z but like that's not the same as seeing somebody kind of falling in love with them and like thinking i really want to be with that person do you know what i mean so like him i get it he's built up this whole thing around his head and he's always thought about penny one way and he's had it and he's gone for it and it's not really been what he thought but at the end of the day you can always progress and get better because you can spend more time with somebody that you connect with and obviously you can enjoy their personal space a lot more and then the romance will start kicking right now it's like horny stage there's no romance there do you know what i mean it's just like yeah 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 that's howard but when you get into a relationship, it's more about the feelings and what you're doing, how you connect together. And that's where it'll get better. But again, they just said that the Harry Potter movie, the fourth one, was all right. Mate, was that not... Uh, was that not... Uh, the one with the schools? Oh, mate, what, the Goblet of Fire? I thought that was sick, mate. Like, to be honest. What did you have? You had the uh, Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prison of Azkaban, and uh, what? This one. Thought I was saying, the Goblet of Fire. I thought it was well, good me, to be honest. Bringing the full sc uh, the schools there, competing against each other. That's when Voldemort come back, was it not? When he killed Cedric Diggory, when the Tri Wizard tournament was going on. You know what I mean? I thought that was a sick one. Sheldon, dinner's here. 
Tandoori Palace. No, we went somewhere new. Good naturedly ribbing me, aren't you? <laughs> no, I love my palace. Why? Why would we change? <laughs> we have a perfectly good palace. Tandoori Palace is our palace. Me, this will be just fine. You are the authority on just fine. What are they talking about? Uh, I don't know. And you and Leonard had a disappointing sexual encounter. Well, earlier this evening, Leonard characterized it as just fine. So what you're seeing here is a continuation of the mocking that followed. <laughs> Penny, wait. Uh, I sense I may have crossed some sort of line. I'm so embarrassed. Please don't be mad. What did you tell them? Nothing bad. Just that last night was fine. Let me ask you this. How was last night for you? Okay. That's worse okay. than fine. Yeah, that is worse than fine. It's a perfectly good word. I mean, you put it in front of okay and you really got something. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Let's not overreact. You know, for a lot of couples, it takes time to get to know each other's rhythms. See, we should have done this last night, you know? Have a little wine, take the edge off. Actually, ethyl alcohol inhibits electrical conduction in the nerve cells. You're misunderstanding. A shiksa goddess isn't an actual goddess. <laughs> We don't pray to them, we pray on them. What's that? Sounds like a cricket. Hang on. That's in the pool. Based on the number of chirps per minute yeah. and the ambient temperature in this room, it is a snowy tree cricket. How do you know what the exact temperature of the room is? Under the terms of my roommate agreement with Leonard, I've had unilateral control of the thermostat ever since the sweaty night of 06. You were right about Wolverine and bone claws, but you're wrong about the cricket. It's chirps for itself. <laughs> Humorous wordplay. Okay, okay, tell you what, I am willing to bet anything that's an ordinary field cricket. What's the matter, you chicken? I've always found that an inappropriate slur. Chickens are not by nature at all timid. In fact, when I was young, <laughs> my neighbor's chicken got loose and chased me up the big elm tree in front of our house. One of my Fantastic Four number 48 first appearance of Silver Surfer against your Flash 123, the classic Flash of Two Worlds issue. All right, you have a wager. I mean, that, if I was right, I'd, I'd be gone, me. There's no way that I'd be there. They'd be like, he's got no stakes in it. He's literally got nothing to play for. He's just got absolute boredom trying to find a cricket that's knocking around. Now, with the way the episode and the show goes, you would think that it would be Sheldon that's correct. But because he brags about it so often, and he usually is correct, when a wager's coming on, I'm going to say that Howard's going to be uh the the victor which is going to be really interesting because i'd love to see how sheldon reacts like the thing is you know in competition so this is kind of what it is in it you have a winner and you have a loser obviously you know you have a wager somebody wins somebody loses but you know you can only truly know how to win is when you first um are able to deal with defeat you know what i mean like you can't be a sore loser Sole losers are people that usually continuously win and never actually lose. And when they do, they can't hack it. And I feel like that could be Sheldon. Where, like, a true winner has been successful and they've obviously um, experienced a couple of setbacks as well. And it's back and forth, back and forth. And it's much more sweeter when you actually come forward. That's why you always want to challenge Sheldon. Because, obviously, if he wins, he can kind of, like, rub it in his face because he never loses. And it'd be interesting to see if he is a sore one. More wine? Hit me. <laughs> Sounds like it's over there, near the door. Hallway. Yeah. <laughs> what order would you say that should have been from leaving? I would have said Howard Sheldon, Raj. Elevator shaft. Help me open it. Are you crazy? We can't go down an empty elevator shaft. Fine. If you don't want to proceed, then you forfeit the bet, and I'll take possession of your Fantastic Four. I may be small, but I took Kung Fu when I was 13, and I remember a good deal of it. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I grew up with an older brother and a very contentious twin sister, and I believe I could easily best you in any physical confrontation, be it noogies, swirlies, or the classic, why are you hitting yourself? Mm. What are we drinking now? Peppermint schnapps. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Why would you buy peppermint schnapps? Because I like peppermint and it's fun to say schnapps. <laughs> There's a lot of transitions in this episode. If I were not being careful, you're telling me to be careful would not make me careful. Hello? <laughs> yeah, imagine that list started moving. It's really dark down here. <laughs> really can't hold your liquor, can you? Just a little mouthwash and then I'm gonna rock your world. That is disgusting. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
Toby is an absurd name for a cricket. What would you name him? A an lemonade? appropriate cricket name? For example, Jiminy? Hey, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> See it? The common field cricket, aka Gorillus assimilis, which is Latin for suck it, you lose. This is Toby. Raj, what do you think? Oh, I really don't care anymore. <laughs> Establish that I'm wrong once. All right, tell you what, let's get down to the entomology department and let Professor Crawley tell us what kind of cricket Toby is. Holy crap. <laughs> it's like silence of the lambs down here. Like bugs, okay? They freak me out. Interesting. You're afraid of insects and women. Ladybugs must render you catatonic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock! Just walk in. Why be polite to the world's leading expert on the dung beetle? I'm sorry? I haven't even packed yet, and you're already measuring my lab for one of your godless laser machines. World-renowned entomologist with a doctorate and 20 years of experience to do with his life when the university cuts off the funding for his lab. Huh? Find another entomologist. No, no, we're here. Let's settle this. Professor, can you identify our cricket? Of course I can. I can identify every insect and arachnid on the planet. Well, could you look at Toby? Toby? What a stupid name for a cricket. It's a field cricket. Yes, just, no, wait, uh, Dr. Crowley, are you sure? Young man, I've been studying insects since I was eight years old. See that? That's a Crawley's dung beetle. I discovered it after spending six months slogging through the Bornean rainforests. While my wife was back home, shacking up with a two-bit ornithologist. And I tell you that that's a common field cricket. You can take that to the damn bank, because God knows I can't. That tramp took me for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy Oxnard. I'm sure your daughter's looking forward to having you. Is this to wallow it's in an ill-considered cricket wager? What, do they have wee cricket now? <laughs> hey, well, that's good. Be very popular. Anyway, I'm just saying that you're feeling upset about something with Howard, and I'm upset about something with Leonard. Yes, yes, the disappointing sex. We can always go back to being friends. But I just said that. This conversation has started to circle. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> There's a half hour wait at the bank to get into my safe deposit box. I was forced to talk to Penny about your sexual problem. Pride went before my fall, causing my Flash 123 to go with Dewalowitz. <laughs> right, right, you're saying you talked to Penny. You Yes. Have I crossed some sort of line again? A little bit. No, he actually didn't do anything wrong in that conversation. <laughs> Did Sheldon say to you? Not a lot. Just that we always have the option of going back to being friends. I have to admit, things seem simpler when we were just friends. We'll just be friends. Good. Good. <laughs> friends of benefits. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You could still do that and slow build it. Okay. <laughs> like that's the thing right is in a relationship you don't just decide to like so if you start dating somebody now boy girl whoever and like you don't just decide yo we're, we're together now like that does happen over a long period of time isn't it do you know what i mean like you date for a couple of months and then you say and then obviously yeah you become exclusive to each other you don't just like date them instantly you know what i mean like it's they've gone from being friends to all in just like bang straight away and that's not really the best way to go about it because it is kind of like i wouldn't say false because it's been a long time coming but it just feels like it's all at once you know what i mean just full on where you could still have your two normal lives see each other as you do mostly but go on a few dates so one time a week you'll go cinema another time you'll go bowling another time you'll go for a walk or picnic in the park you know another time you have a weekend away like you just have your slow little things where you progressively collectively come together as a unit instead of just instantly becoming one just because you slept with each other do you know what i mean so like i understand um like i understand what sheldon was trying to say to be honest you know they do have a chance to pull it back and and just be friends if it's not actually going with uh the way they wanted it to to go but they're not actually adjust it in i think the correct way i feel like friendship benefits would be ideal for these straight away and then move forward from there and i feel like that's what they're gonna do but they can't just be drinking every time they're with each other just so that they can kind of become how would you say it uh okay with the situation because then that it's kind of like a failure from the start isn't it so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with these two going forward
Okay, that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out the channel today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. So, I was interested to see if um, Sheldon was going to be a sore loser, to be honest. You know, I was saying there, you know, a good person who competes, whether it's betting, games, whatever, sport, they know how to lose and you know how to win, you know. And a good sportsman um, would know the victor, the feeling of victory once you've experienced a loss. And it's usually like the sore losers who cry and moan and complain when it was a fair bet. And uh, they didn't win. And the fact is, you know what? Impress me, Sheldon. You know, usually he's really clever and usually he wins all his debates and his arguments. And um, today he didn't. And he actually got his comic and he was willing to give it as well. I think that he actually don't, he impressed me. <laughs> like, he actually impressed me a little bit. Now, again, uh, that was pretty solid between those two, though, to be honest, to identify the cricket. I thought that it would have been something when he took it to that guy that it would have been a cricket that was never discovered before. And both of them would have been wrong. Do you know what I mean? Or it would have been a different one. What would the situation have been then? You know, if they turned up and we said, what cricket is it? And he said something different, then both of them would be like, what, what do we do now? You know what I mean? But in today's episode, you know, Leonard was talking to the guys and said that it was fine. You know what I mean? Like um, the, the situation between him and Penny and the sex that they had. And, um, you know, and really, it's not that great, is it, when you think of it like that? Because the word fine in certain situations doesn't sound amazing. But then, like he was saying, you put it into fine wine and fine dining. That's what a lot of, uh, you know, advertisers and, and restaurants he put out there to show it's a, an exclusive, a better experience. And, uh, you know, when he asked Penny when she kind of felt a bit upset or whatever about the situation, she said it was OK. And I would say that that is worse than fine. Honestly, worse than it. Um, so it looked like he was going to maybe go back to being friends. But now they've got the hands on them. Kind of little in the honeymoon kind of feeling where you can't kind of keep your hands off each other. I'd be interested to see how long that lasts and if they actually do try to be in an actual relationship. Do you know where, like, they move forward and going on dates? Because we never really experienced that with them. When we did get the date at the end of Season 1, it was just insinuated that it went okay. At the start of Season 2, we never seen them together in that experience. So, I'm excited to see what we do with that one as well. But thanks for checking out today's episode. If you did enjoy it, please smash a like. It really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.